Hi, I'm Greg Turner, and I'm the radiology coach. It's my job to demystify the enigmatic world of x-rays. Today, I want to discuss with you the topic of x-ray grids. And you've probably heard of them, but you may or may not understand why they are so critical in the x-ray process. I've often compared grids to a gold digger's pan. A gold digger's pan is designed to separate mud or dirt from the desired substance, which is gold nuggets. Similarly, the function of x-ray grids is basically to filter out unwanted x-rays, also known as scattered x-rays, from an x-ray film. Scatter radiation is comprised of useless x-rays that tend to interfere with your x-ray image rather than to contribute towards it. They are the result of x-ray photons that have been deflected in different directions before ever reaching the film cassette. In contrast, the useful x-ray have been either absorbed by the patient, creating a shadow on the film, or they pass through the patient and reach the x-ray plate, creating more shadows that are useful. When there is significant scatter on a film, the x-ray image looks either very gray or washed out. The edges of the anatomy are more difficult to see. It affects the physician's ability to adequately interpret the image and really opens the door for doctors being held liable for misdiagnoses on their patients. The grids are placed between the patient and the film cassette, meaning if you have an x-ray table, the grid is placed directly under the table board. Or if you shoot x-rays upright, like chest x-rays, the grid is hidden behind the wall board. When the x-rays pass through the patient, through the grid, and then finally to the cassette, the scatter radiation is blocked out. Not 100%, but they are significantly diminished. Let's look at how this, ha let's look at how this happens. The grids are designed with hundreds of long strips all lead laid out next to each other in a parallel fashion. And in between each of these lead strips are other strips that allow x-rays to pass through them. Often they're made from a substance called carbon fiber. Now it used to be wood strips, now more often it's carbon fiber. So now you have lead strips, carbon fiber, lead strips, carbon fiber structures or matrices. Now these lead strip carbon fiber structures are angled toward the camera tube. Keep in mind that these are tiny, tiny strips. They're all specifically designed and tailored to be focused along the path of the x-rays. Now let's stop and explain why this is necessary and why this design is so crucial. X-rays act like light from a flashlight. They diverge. They spread out the further they get from the flashlight itself. In contrast to this, when you shine a light on the wall, there is always a larger circle on the wall than on the front of the flashlight. This is because the light expands out as it travels through the air. So captivating this concept in x-rays, engineers have calculated the exact projection of the x-rays as they pass through the air and hit the cassette. They usually factor in the distance in this algorithm, and in other words, they factor in the, what the angle of the x-ray photons are approaching from the film when the film is positioned at, say, 40 inches from the camera. Let's take it a step further. Remember the example of the flashlight on the wall, how the light diverges as it leaves the flashlight and hits the wall. Well, it's important to understand that a majority of the light rays are concentrated in the middle of the projection. projection. Think about it. When you look at the light on the wall, it is brighter in the center than it is around the periphery of the circle. In other words, the concentration of the light is heavier in the middle and it gets less concentrated as you expand out to the edges. Well, in the same way, x-rays are focused in the middle and they diverge out at different angles the further you get from the centering point. So now you can understand the design of grids. The lead strips on the grid are aligned straight ahead in the center. And as the strips get further out, they begin to angle along the direction that the photons are traveling in. Getting back to scatter radiation, these unwanted photons are scrambling in every direction. When the x-ray tube expels them, they hit the patient in a, cent in a certain angle and are deflected in every crazy direction after that. So now it's impossible grid at the right angle 
to get to the film cassette. Now when they hit the grid, they're either absorbed or they're deflected by the lead strips and they can never hit the film. This is how we clean up the x-rays when examining a large body part. The grid literally decides which x-rays are going to hit the film and which ones aren't. Now for those out there who are familiar with grids, not all grids are designed specifically as I described. Some are cross-hatched, some are fanned out, but the reason for this video is simply to help you understand what they are and how they work. I'll have more material on this topic later. Be sure to check out more of my videos online. My name is Greg Turner and I'm the Radiology Coach. Mark my words and mark your films.